Short Talks Introduction Early one morning, words were missing. Before that, words were not. Facts were, faces were. In a good story, Aristotle tells us, everything that happens is pushed by something else. One day, someone noticed there were stars but no words. Why? I've asked a lot of people. I think it's a good question. Three old women were bending in the fields. What use is it to question us, they said. Well, it shortly became clear that they knew everything there is to know about the snowy fields and the blue-green shoots and the plant called audacity that poets mistake for violets. I began to copy out everything that was said. The marks construct an instant of nature gradually, without the boredom of a story. I emphasize this. I will do anything to avoid boredom. It is the task of a lifetime. You can never know enough, never work enough, never use the infinitives and participles oddly enough, never impede the movement harshly enough, never leave the mind quickly enough. Short talk on Homo sapiens. With small cuts, Cro-Magnon man recorded the moon's phases on the handles of his tools, thinking about her as he worked. Animals, horizon, face in a pan of water. In every story I tell comes a point where I can see no further. I hate that point. It is why they call storytellers blind. It is a taunt. Short talk on Gertrude Stein about 9.30 p.m. How curious. I had no idea. Today has ended. Short talk on where to travel. I went traveling to a wreck of a place. There were three gates standing ajar and a fence that broke off. It was not the wreck of anything else in particular. A place came there and crashed. After that, it remained the wreck of a place. Light fell on it. Short talk on trout. In haiku, there are various sorts of expressions about trout. Autumn trout and descending trout and rusty trout are some I have heard. Descending trout and rusty trout are trout that have laid their eggs. Worn out, completely exhausted, they are going down to the sea. Of course, there were occasionally trout that spent the winter in deep pools. These were called remaining trout. Short talk on Ovid. I see him there on a night like this, but cool, the moon blowing through black streets. He sups and walks back to his room. The radio is on the floor. Its luminous green dial blares softly. He sits down at the table. People in exile write so many letters. Now Ovid is weeping. Each night about this time, he puts on sadness like a garment and goes on writing. In his spare time, he is teaching himself the local language, Getic, in order to compose in it an epic poem no one will ever read. Short talk on major and minor. Major things are wind, evil, a good fighting horse, prepositions, inexhaustible love, the way people choose their king. Minor things include dirt, the names of schools of philosophy, mood and not having a mood, the correct time. There are more major things than minor things overall, yet there are more minor things than I have written here, but it is disheartening to list them. When I think of you reading this, I do not want you to be taken captive, separated by a wire mesh lined with glass from your life itself, like some Electra. Short talk on walking backwards. My mother forbade us to walk backwards. That is how the dead walk, she would say. Where did she get this idea? Perhaps from a bad translation. The dead, after all, do not walk backwards, but they do walk behind us. They have no lungs and cannot call out, but would love for us to turn around. They are victims of love, many of them. Short talk on hedonism. Beauty makes me hopeless. I don't care why anymore, I just want to get away. When I look at the city of Paris, I long to wrap my legs around it. When I watch you dancing, there is a heartless immensity like a sailor in a dead calm sea. 
desires as round as peaches bloom in me all night, I no longer gather what falls. <laughs>